Hey, Dr. Adam Nally here. I thought I would uh, come and make a video. Uh, I put this on uh, YouTube for you guys that ask a lot about protein calculations. Um, I do this almost every, with every patient in my office, and I figured I could just do this as if you were sitting in front of me in my office um, and give you the protein calculations that I use for a ketogenic lifestyle. Um, a lot of people ask, well, Dr. Nally, what macros should I be using? And so what I want you to understand is that I don't like macros because macros differ for every person. And if you're using a percentage based on ca a calorie count, that calorie count is going to fluctuate throughout the day based on the amount of sleep you had, the amount of stress you're under, how physically active you are, and a number of things that way. So what I, I, I try to make things easy, and I do it in really a three-step process. So step number one is lower the carbohydrate less than 20 grams per day. That's the most important step. Um, how do you, what, what are grams? Um, I've got a lot of helps on my website at docmuscles.com. I've done a bunch of videos about that. Um, if, you've, if you're one of my, my patients, um, there's a six-page handout that I give you that, that talks about what the gram of carbohydrate is per serving of various fruits, vegetables, breads, rices, and pastas, things of that nature. Um, on average, if it's a vegetable, um, if it's a leafy green, um, you can have as much as you want. If it's not a leaf and green at the same time, then it's usually about one half cup uh, is uh, cooked is about 10 grams of carbohydrate, or one cup cooked of vegetables are, are, are uncooked are, are about 10 grams of carbohydrate. Um, and I'll put this up on the screen so you can see it. Um, that includes broccoli and cauliflower and things like that that we commonly use on a ketogenic lifestyle, but for many people, they actually can inhibit weight loss if you're overeating those types of things. Even almond flours and things like that, if you're eating an excessive amount, those carbohydrates do count, add up over time, and you have to be cautious with that in regards to portions, and so that's important to understand. Vegetables, um, I, I usually one vegetable, if you eat the vegetable in the way the Lord packaged it uh, from the, the, I'm sorry, fruits, when I'm talking about fruits, when fruits, if you eat them the way that they were packaged off the tree, um, those are usually 15 grams in uh, per apple, per orange, uh, although a banana is 30 grams of carbohydrate, uh, it's twice the size of a regular piece of fruit in many cases. Um, same thing with melons, half, uh, usually uh, a quarter of a melon is going to be 15 grams of carbohydrate, so uh, be cautious with those things. Um, you can find a lot of the carbohydrate content of food on um, nutrition.com uh, It has or, or some of the nutrition sites that are available there. They have that information. But if you're one of my patients, you can read that in the handout. So first, keep the carbohydrates less than 20 grams per day. Second, important aspect is we, we want to calculate protein. Now, um, the ca calculation of protein for men um, is uh, for the first five feet of height, we give you 50 grams of protein. And then for every inch thereafter, 50, uh, uh, five feet of height, we give you 2.3 grams. So if you're a six foot male, that means for the first five feet, we give you 50 grams of protein. And for the next 12 inches, you multiply that by 2.3, and that gives you um, a number that, that you add to the 50. Um, then we multiply that by 1.2 if you are a um, if you're not active, if you're sedentary, and if you're an active male, we multiply that by 1.6. Um, that'll give you the grams per um, uh, uh, of the grams of protein that you need per day. Uh, and if you're eating three times a day, you can divide that by three. I'm going to put the calculations here so you can see that. If you're a female, for the first five feet, we give you 45 grams of protein. And for every inch thereafter, we give you 2.3 grams of protein as well. Um, there's no multiplier if you're sedentary. That, that um, 45 um, grams of protein plus whatever we add to it based on your height is the amount of protein you need per day as a baseline. Um, if you're physically active, we, we multiply that by 1.2. If you're really act at a really active female at a, at a, at a, where you're doing six days of activity, about 30 to, 30 to 60 minutes a day, we can multiply that by 1.4. Remember, these protein levels are starting points. They're starting um, protein levels. You may find that if you're still hungry, you need to increase that uh, a little bit more. And sometimes we add anywhere between 30, 20 and 30 grams of protein more, uh, depending on your physical activity level. But these are starting points. And, and oftentimes I use these because my patient population is, is usually between you know, 65 and 75. Or that's my average patient. And they're not quite as physically active uh, as, as a younger person would be. Um, but many, some of them are. And so we have to calculate that in. So that's important. Um, so you can use those calculations there. These calculations are also on my blog, and the reference to the, to the uh, protein calculations is below uh, in the blog uh, information down uh, below uh, in the reference section of this video. Um, so remember, so keep the carbs under 20 grams. Number two, uh, calculate the protein based on your height and your physical activity. Number three, uh, for every gram of protein, you need a gram of fat. I, I, I don't use macros because that doesn't work. Uh, that's not how food is made. They're not made in macros. Food comes in packaging, and if you eat red meat, pork, bacon, eggs, sausage, 
uh, red meats, uh, porks, things like that. These are all roughly one to one in regards to grams of protein per grams of fat. Bacon and sausage may be a little higher depending on the cut. Sometimes it's one to 1.1 or 1.2. Uh, but roughly, if you if your protein to fat ratio of that food, let's say we, you you'd use hamburger and it's got a one to one ratio of for every gram of protein, there's a gram of fat. If you calculate the calories, if you calculate the percentage of fat by calories, that comes out somewhere between 60 and 70% fat. So if you're eating red meat, pork, bacon, eggs, and sausage, you're hitting 60 to 70% fat um, with that particular food. That's that's a that's a ketogenic uh, level. Now. A high fat diet is any diet that contains more than 30% fat. So you're already at a high fat diet in, in that regard. And if you're eating more chicken, fish, or turkey predominantly, then you're gonna see that, that that percentage drops down to somewhere between 25 to 35%, depending on how you cook it, what you cook that uh, chicken, fish, or turkey in. So, so you, you can see how that you can fluctuate your fat content based on your hunger level. And if you're more hungry and you need more fuel because you're more physically active, you may wanna focus on more red meats and eggs. If you're, um, more, if you're looking for more lean foods and you're decreasing that fat because you're that fat, that food fills you up too fast, then you may want to look at leaner foods uh, to ensure that you're getting adequate protein. There is no carbohydrate deficiency disease, so you don't have to eat any carbohydrates if you don't want to, um, but there, is, there are deficiency diseases with protein loss and there's uh, fat, fat deficiencies if you're not eating enough fat. So those are two things that are important. So I wanted to give you that video, make sure you had the information that's there. Uh, this is as a help. Um, like I said, I've got you, I've got the calculations will be on the screen. Uh, as I speak here, I'm gonna add those on after I finish the video here. And then secondly, uh, if you go down below, uh, there's a reference to the blog post that has this written out too if you want to print it out or use it that way. So uh, check that out, see if that helps. Hopefully that'll give you some insight uh, in how to calculate protein needs. Um, I, I know there's a number of other protein calculators out there, a number of bodybuilding sites have them and, and they use a slightly different variation, but oftentimes the, the, the starting points are close to the same. And remember these, these are starting points, they're, they're not the end all be all. Uh, you may fluctuate up or down based on your needs and your physical activity. So hopefully that helps. You guys have a great day. Remember, keep the fat high by eating red meat, pork, bacon, and eggs, or, and keep the fat, keep the carbs low and pass the bacon. Have a great evening. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.